Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and welcome to this press conference with Mr. Mohammed Maziad Touwejeri of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Before I give Mr. Al Touwejeri the floor, a few housekeeping points. This press conference involves journalists who are participating in person and also via WebEx. If you are participating via WebEx and would like to ask a question, please raise your hand by pressing the icon at the bottom of the screen. I would also be grateful if all journalists would please identify themselves and their news organization before taking the floor. Interpretation in the room will be provided in English, French, and Spanish. The complete bio for Mr. Al Touwejeri is available now on the WTO website, and the statement he has just delivered to the General Council will be on the site very soon. Mr. Al Touwejeri will give a brief opening statement, and then we will take your questions. We have precisely 30 minutes for this press conference. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm actually very honored, privileged to be here. Uh, I equally realize the timing challenge of the world and what we are collectively facing, including the WTO. I fully realize the significant demand for this point of time for a fully dedicated DG for the WTO, who should bring in a very solid, necessary reform agenda based on evidence, based on track record of actual delivery of mandates. Finally, I think with COVID-19 and pre-COVID-19, things globally will probably mo be more uncertain and more difficult for trade and for any business in the world. With that, I leave you to your questions. Very good. Let's start with questions on the floor. And the first, the first. Let's start with questions from the floor. And the first question is for Laurent. Vous avez la parole. Laurent Ciro, Swiss News Agency, um, Minister. How can you feel the, the support of your regional bloc behind you? Because there were tensions in the recent years between your country and, and Qatar, for instance. So do you feel a, a real uh, uh, united uh, support behind your candidacy? Thank you. Uh, first of all, I will not comment on any dispute. Uh, second, I do respect that Qatar is a member of the WTO and as a member-driven organization, uh, I think we should talk about the uh, members' goals, how to achieve them, uh, what are the necessary reforms, and how do we navigate collectively uh, through this time of uncertainty uh, in the world. The next question is for Bryce Bashuk from Bloomberg. Bryce, you have the floor, please. <coughs> Bryce Bashuk with Bloomberg, thank you for your comments, sir. Um, I want to ask you, what, what do you believe is the greatest problem facing the WTO at this moment, and what is your plan to fix it? Thank you very much. Uh, 25 years of history, the organization was established on common agreed goals. Uh, it's a member-driven organization, and there has been some good successes in the past. However, the world has changed and has changed significantly in the last decade, and particularly in the last few years. So I think the biggest issue that WTO is facing today is around process. There is this three functions that was by design of members. It's negotiations, dispute settlements, and monitoring. People go into that design system of the WTO, and they basically have no process for negotiation. So what happens? Things get delayed, and people go out of the box, or out of the triangle, to have less trust in the organization, 
and ultimately find alternative solutions, alternative way out. The more of this that happens as a circle, the more of a bigger deep uh, is there in the WTO. So it's mainly a process enhancement challenge. How to fix it? I think the mindset that's needed today is a component of two things, management and leadership. So the DG in his mandate for the next few years should focus on delivery, should focus on process enhancement, should focus on building key performance indicators. He should perform, uh, focus on success factors and design those so actually members can see progress and can measure progress and can see why are we not moving. One of the outcome of this approach to the solution is actually digging deep into the root causes. You know, whenever there is a dispute, you should ask a lot of questions to find out why there is a dispute. What is the root cause? Now the process will resolve the progress issue, so things can move. But unless we go there and deep into the root causes, then we most probably gonna have them again and again and again. So I'm approaching this from more of a management, leadership, respecting the essence of this organization as a member driven, and go back to the original goals that were established uh, at the beginning. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. La prochaine question est pour Nina Larson, Larson de Agence France Presse. Nina, vous avez la parole. Thank you very much, uh, Nina Larson, AFP. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the need for um, an African to take the take the lead of the organization, but there's also never been a DG from an Arab uh, country before. Do you think that's an argument, and what do you think specifically uh, you could, you're uh, coming from that geographical location mm -hmm. could contribute to uh, the WTO? Thank you. First of all, I think the uh, WTO need to think about what they need uh, at this point of time. And I uh, go back to my uh, initial response. This is a time of management and leadership. It's very important because the situation needs a lot of experience that's coming from delivery, from actual execution. So what I'm putting on the table is a mix of 25 years in the private sector, working in multinational organizations in different parts of the world, where trade was core to my business. I've always seen trade from a trade finance point of view, from corridor building point of view, from the ultimate users of trade and its complexities, not only as a function, but also what's associated with it. Talk about logistics, transportation, the insurance business, manufacturing, energy, so I'm bringing to the WTO that experience, fresh look, truly fresh look, of what the private sector is thinking about trade. Secondly, for the last four years, I've been a Minister of Economy and Planning, and I was part of probably one of the biggest reforms that took place in the world in recent history. A major transformation, the essence is around economic diversification and job creation, private sector enabling, very much the same of the original goals of the WTO. And this is fresh, this is ongoing. One of the things I've done uh, in the last four years is creating a delivery unit. This delivery unit, main responsibility is to try and measure performance, try and fill gaps, go and help people who need technical assistance. All of these issues are visible to me at the WTO today. So a portfolio of 25 years in the private sector, particularly looking at finance and trade, plus policy making and you know, real transformation uh, in a very, very uh, ambitious uh, plan together is probably what the WTO need to think. Is this something that we need today in the DG to come and navigate and help us to be an instrument, a tool, someone who can help members to reach agreement, someone who can improve the negotiation process, someone who can actually think about performance rather than stalling or stalemate situation. Thank you. Let's take a couple of questions from WebEx. The first question is for Mossad Al-Zayani 
of Ashok Al Awsat. You have the floor. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is Msad Zayani from Al Sharq Al Awsat. Uh, my question for ex uh, His Excellency Mohammed Twedri What's the uh, power things, powerful things in your plan for uh, WTO reform? First of all, I have very deep realization that this is a member-driven organization and rule-based multi-trade system. So let's establish that. This is the fact that nobody can uh, argue. Uh, second, I think the director general, uh, as a function, need to help and assess within the functions designed by the WTO itself. However, there is also room to improve. For example, the ministerial conference, the next one is called MC12, which means number 12, is now being delayed because of COVID-19. And to me, I see this probably blessing in disguise, meaning maybe now we have an opportunity immediately to improve the discussions of MC12, the outcome. What can we do between now and then? We have a year to prepare. And during the MC12, what is it that we want to show the ministers in terms of here we are adapting to the new reality, adapting to the new world, here is our KPIs, and this is how we think we should measure progress. And then post the MC12, how can we bring back the thoughts and the leadership of the ministers back to the organization. So one of the things that I would like to do is to make sure this feedback loop from a management and leadership point of view is continuous, is very, very much continuous. Things I will consider uh, seriously is, again, bringing in this delivery unit concept to the WTO. I would like to select top-notch, very qualified individuals, existing staff or new staff, that they understand the DNA of the organization. They understand the issues. They've been through disputes. They've been through negotiation. They can tackle small issues and go and help in the delivery, help list developed countries who's in need, help members, and create, again, this feedback loop, this performance indicators and these KPIs and help to identify key success factors. Third. I will think about what is on the table today in terms of mandates, transactions, ready for the MC12. You know, fisheries is one, uh, digital is two, and many others. But let's not exaggerate. I, th I think there is potentially so much more to be done. I see also this COVID-19 and the post-pandemic era as a great opportunity, usually, People perform better under crisis. People perform better when they see stress. And the WTO itself and even the GATT were both created under very uncertain environments. So if we think about now, we think the uncertainty and the COVID-19 is even bigger. So why not rethink some of the rules, rethink some of the processes, introduce new ideas to the members so that this ship start moving. Again, one thing that I would be very, very delighted to perform is a deep dive into the DG role and responsibilities. I want to really understand where are the gaps, what happened, why things are not moving, what can be done, and bring in scenarios, bring in ideas into solutions. So this, call it an MRI, is very critical, not only because what's visible Everybody knows what's visible, but also there, is, there may be something invisible down there. I need to dig that deep. Now, with the experience I've had both in the private sector and the policy making as minister in the government, fit this kind of transformation, this kind of reform necessary for the WTO, I think the answer is yes. And also, when you see things from different angles, you by default have a natural ability to come up with solutions. You know, that's, that's very important. So this is what I will do. I think it's necessary if you want, but also respect that this is a member-driven organization. 
it is very important to respect a rule base, very important to respect that, you know, there are designs, functions that need to be in place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's take another WebEx question. This one coming from Washington, D.C. Hannah Monikin from Inside U.S. Trade. Hannah, you have the floor, please. Thanks, Keith. Uh, good afternoon, Minister. Um, this question has been asked of all of the women candidates, but only one of the male candidates, so I thought I would ask it of you as well. Um, do you think it's time for a, women, a woman to lead the WTO after there's only been male um, directors general for the of both the GATT and the WTO? And related to that, you know, what do you think sets you apart from the seven other candidates? Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, in terms of women empowering uh, and how important objective this is for the WTO and actually everywhere, I am personally a great believer. I have also a great track record. And I'll share with you, I personally have eight sisters and you can imagine having eight sisters uh, to see them progressing through careers and challenges and lives. So it's hands-on experience <laughs> around uh, women empowerment. So I do really wish everybody luck into this race. Uh, by the end of the day, if I see the WTA makes the right decision for the goodwill of the WTO and the world trade, I'll be very happy. But honestly, what distinguishes the Saudi candidate, me, is the 360 angle brought into the job. The private sector, I've worked with big American banks, big European banks around the world, and I've seen trade from the finance and from the challenges, and I've seen people, why people exit trade? What triggers people to exit trade? Why do, why do they stop trade? You know, what's the profitability? How people measure their performance in terms of opening up more? And what, how do they see the WTO from that angle? So I'm bringing that in, okay? And you all know that any executive around the world who works in the private sector cannot work but with deliverables, with very specific targets, deadlines. So I wanna reintroduce or introduce this culture to the WTO. Secondly, again, Saudi Arabia through its vision 2030, this is the fifth year. I am very proud to see this transformation taking place in a very difficult region. Again, the core concepts is economic diversification. It is empowering the private sector. It's women empowerment. And recently, Saudi Arabia won the number one reformer globally in terms of doing business and in terms of women at work. So this transformation is yielding. It's actually getting results. I can also bring in that hot from the oven, that current experience to the WTO. It's complex in nature, but the management and leadership side of it is very similar. It's very similar. So I hope the combination of these two, especially at this point of time of the global uncertainty, will put me as a front learner, runner for this job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're going to take a WhatsApp question now. And this question comes from Ali Al-Matani from the Omani newspaper Al-Shabiba. And, and um, Ali's question is, why don't Arab, Arab countries unite as one around a single candidate rather than there being two candidates and might this mean that you would lose votes as a result? Look, first of all, every member of the WTO has the absolute right to nominate uh, their candidates. I uh, have no, uh, no comment on that. Uh, one, two, I think the real issue here is uh, Saudi Arabia, when uh, it's under the G20 presidency uh, this year, have actually initiated something a while back related to the reform of the WTO. And the initial drive was to gain the political will behind these reforms. It's very important. It's very important. We do have the brand and reputation issue. We have the process issue, but also the political will behind the reforms. It's a must. So Saudi Arabia, uh, 
initiated this and there has been a lot of work done uh, to achieve the uh, G20 uh, agenda item regarding the WTO. Uh, so we thought again, maybe the continuity of this and with our own transformation, with the specific experience of the candidate, maybe they should add up to be a very suitable candidate for the WTO at this point of time. But, you know, by the end of the day, this is a member driven, everybody has the right to nominate, vote independently. And in many ways, this race creates a lot of, uh, you know, in the system creates a lot of value. Because again, members see different views, different insights, different ideas around reform. So in many ways, I'm pleased there are eight candidates and some of them and all of them actually are very competent. So I wish everybody luck. Thank you very much. We're going to go back to WebEx now. And the question is for Ayana Dreyer from Bordelex. Ayana, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much, Keith. Uh, thank you, Minister. Um, I have a question. You, you, uh, you offer, I, I find you st uh, stick out a little bit by offering a very managerial um, uh, approach to the to the WTO. Uh, ma many people who've been a long time watching the WTO for a long time tend to see the issue more as a political uh, issue of uh, you know divergences between notably the US and China um, rather than a managerial problem uh, in the secretariat that has a reputation for actually being extraordinarily lean uh, compared to other uh, UN and other bodies, for example. I was wondering, could, could you speak more on that and how you would handle precisely the tough politics going on and the deep divisions among the, among the big powers? Thank you. So in addition to the political angle, I think, I think there is also the technical angle. So it's a combination, really. Uh, when I said management and leadership, I was talking about a very specific need for the DJ uh, office and the process itself, because once the process is enhanced and fixed, I would think both the technical and the political have a better chance to succeed. Why would people, what is the root cause of people getting into disputes? Now, I'm not gonna argue about specific disputes, but the root cause, why would people go into disputes? Because the negotiation process did not work. So how do we improve the negotiation process? This is a management problem. It is a leadership problem. Now there is a bit of reaching out later, talking to multinationals, to head of states, ministers down the road, and I am a great believer of communication. And I think we do have the access, absolutely. I've always been a participant in IMF annual meetings, WEF, Davos, I am in charge of SDGs in the UN, uh, and, and many others. So. That angle, I am not worried about. The access is there, this is the WTO. I think we should have a solution oriented toward the why, the process, and enhancement, and continuously do this. If that trust is regained to the WTO operation, I think politically will be support. If that trust is regained and the process people see evidence every day, the technical challenges, will be better. They won't be as severe. So that's why I'm approaching it from the management and leadership point. But I do realize fully that the political and the technical sides of the equation is as important. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to go back to WebEx now. And the question is for Anas Al Yusuf of the Saudi Gazette. Anas, you have the floor, please. Uh, thanks, Keith. Um, Anas al Yusuf from Saudi Gazette. Uh, my question to the minister. Uh, some people might see the organization uh, lately incapable of leading the global trade. Uh, how you can describe the future of the WTO that Hamadat Tawajri will work for? Uh, also, you just mentioned briefly that uh, Saudi G20 presidency has launched an initiative to in line with the reforms of the WTO. Uh, how would that work with your uh, vision or program for uh, leading the organization? Thank you. Thank you. 
So the future of the WTO is a member choice. Uh, in my statement today, I have told the members that this is their organization, their goals, their choice. The director general should come in as a facilitator, as a compass, if the organization is drifting away from its true north. And I've gave a lot of examples. The organization is drifting? Yes, it is drifting. Is there a lot of things done recently to get it back on track? Maybe not. What do we need to do? We need to dig deep to find what are the root causes of this drift, what can be done to address them, how can the members collectively be aware of these root causes, how can we in the future, which is my main point, have key performance indicators to make sure the organization don't drift again. And early warning signs, so when there is a big dispute building, it must be actually captured early on. So all of these things as director general potential, I would like to put on the table so when there is another director general in a few years time, I want him to or her to inherit a much better organization. I want the debate to shift from this political will, technical reforms into how can we go back to the original goals and deliver on them. So that's it. Uh, in, in four years, we will have an annual achievement goal measured and hopefully delivered. In four years' time, we want this organization to be a much better organization. Naturally, it must be. Otherwise, we will question so many of its existence. We will question a lot of things. So unless this is starting now through the DG and his leadership and management, then I am very concerned of what will happen in the next uh, decade, for example. So I'll do my best. One more. Thank you very much. We have time for one more. Any questions from the floor? Bryce, you have the floor. Um, thank you again. Um, Bryce Bashik with Bloomberg News. Um, I don't believe you mentioned the appellate body. That is, that is a significant issue uh, confronting the WTO right now. What is your plan for addressing the U.S. concerns of the appellate body? And do you intend to get it back working, or do you believe the uh, interim arrangement is the best path forward? Thank you. So, again, as potential director general, uh, you know, having a very uh, imp important view around political disputes is not the director manager's uh, job. Uh, let's set this straight. But I will go back to the same logic why the appellate body is not working. What is the root cause? Simply because the negotiation is not working. So we will go to the block because the initial negotiation did not work well. If I have a role to play, I'll go there. I'll make sure that process next time, next times, next year is enhanced enough so that people politically will have more to think about rather than disputes. They'll have actually data. They'll have more information. They'll have more scenarios. They will have a deep analysis of what it means if this dispute is not resolved today. What happens in one month in our lifetime now is equal to what happens in one year in 1995, collectively. So I would like to tell everybody, all members, do you know the value of one month delay to trade? I would like to quantify this number. So this is what I'm bringing. Do you understand, do you realize that by delaying one month, this is what is happening to global trade? And so on and so forth. Unless the director general start doing that and start to giving those kind of ideas to the members, then we will go into exactly the same circles. We will get dissatisfied, process is broken, solutions outside, blockages, and so on and so forth. Nothing will happen. Are we in this position today? Stalling, absolutely, yes, stalling today. So the first thing the DG needs to do is to stabilize. Stabilize the machine before it actually go into 
further stall and a spin. After a spin, it's very hard to stabilize. So I will work very, very hard on these necessary reforms, make sure I'm process oriented, make sure convince the members of the importance of performance, KPIs, key success factors. And once that done and we get evidence that things are moving, I am very confident that people will come back to the negotiation table. Thank you very much. Mr. Al Touajiri, we thank you very much for your participation in this press conference. Many thanks to all of you who've attended and those who've participated by WebEx. I would ask that if you would like to speak with Mr. Al Touajiri or the Saudi delegation, that you do so in the members' lounge directly above. Please do not in any way block the corridor or impede his progress as we leave out this door. Thank you very much. The next press conference will be in one hour in this room. Thank you.